Hello everybody and welcome back to Space Dock. I'm Hujiwana and today we are following up on our realistic weapons videos by taking a look at ways to avoid being on the receiving end of all that nastiness and the protection spacecraft can use to survive being hit. To do that we are going to be using an Hello. onion. I mean the survivability onion that you may have already seen elsewhere. Is it a real thing used by real people making military equipment or does it exist purely inside DoD powerpoints? We may never know but it is useful for talking about defense defensive systems. The very first layer on our delicious onion is Don't Be There, which is a bit of a difficult one if you have to do something somewhere in particular, and isn't even on most examples of the onion, so we'll sort of gloss over this. Next up is the trio of avoiding identification, avoiding being locked on by weapons, and avoiding being fired at. All three of these line up very heavily with electronic warfare, as any nebulous fleet command player will understand, and could be the topic of a whole video all to itself. Let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in that. Anyway, avoiding being seen or identified can be done in a number of ways, starting with just being so far away that you're just a speck, an unknowable blob on sensors. Moving closer up and you can have things like ship disguises come into play, making your craft look like something that isn't a threat or would need to be engaged in combat in a different way. Think of HMS Indefatigable I mentioned in the ship classification video, which could have been mistaken for something with less guns than it actually had, or the Q-ships of World War II. There's also the sci-fi staple of cloaking devices, which generally come down to turning a ship completely invisible to all sensors, sometimes with limitations on mobility or weapons in exchange, or perhaps just reduced visibility to some sensors, the important ones that are generally used by the majority of ships, as is the case with the Normandy and the Normandy. In a similar vein is stealth type vessels, based on the aircraft technology of the same name, though this is actually low observability and maybe this is another topic that could have a whole video to itself. All these technologies go hand in hand with the next layer on the onion, target acquisition. This is the ability to correctly determine where a target is, where it's moving and all that. Both avoiding being targeted and avoiding being engaged are the main places where electronic warfare comes in with centre jamming, false signals, decoys and all that. But the second one, engagement, crops up more in sci-fi than you may realise. Think of Star Trek, how often do two ships meet, things get tense, weapons get powered up and locked on, but the situation gets resolved through some careful diplomacy or other cleverness. So what if weapons have been fired, how do you avoid being hit? Well the big one is just movement, though how effective that is depends on a number of factors like ship size, maximum acceleration, range and what exactly is being shot at you. If you're close to a laser then it's probably not worth bothering trying to dodge it, it's going to be hitting you. But if the combat is dominated by kinetic weapons and missiles then you have a good chance of avoiding damage. Let's take the first of those, kinetic weapons, because they're the ones that are easiest to dodge, especially at long range when it's going to take several seconds for shots to reach you. If your ship can accelerate fast enough in order to move itself its entire length in the time the shot takes to cross the distance, you can guarantee never being hit. However, this can be countered by firing many shots into a volume of space determined by a probability plot based on how fast a craft can move. It could dodge into this particular bit of space, so fire shots there as well to hit them if they do. This in turn leads to the target doing a drunk walk of pseudo-random manoeuvres while being shot by a gun that is also firing into a whole big area, missing the vast majority of its shots in the hope of getting a hit. This pretty much never shows up in popular sci-fi because combat is generally at short ranges where kinetics will always hit, which makes sense because these sort of dice rolling shenanigans are challenging to make engaging for an audience, and the amount of ammo needed is fairly prohibitive, unless you have really small projectiles or even macrons. Missiles don't have quite the same issues, they can change their course and vector towards a target trying to dodge, at least until they run out of fuel. So at extreme ranges it may be possible to try to outrun a missile, but it's a much safer bet to just shoot it down, either with point defence guns or anti-missile missiles. But then, what if the missile dodges? Well, that's less of a concern for anti-missile missiles, but for guns we're back to the same drunk walk shenanigans. But at least here if the missile dodges too much it'll burn out its propellant supplies and won't hit anything. Again, that takes a lot of ammo, but at least it works out more favourably for the defenders, especially if you throw in special timed fuse ammunition which is designed to detonate near or in front of a missile to saturate the space around it with projectiles. Or even do what Galactica does with flak shells, which is a similar concept but designed to blanket the Battlestar itself, since they can't rely on higher tech firing solutions. Sci-Fi has another very common method of preventing craft from taking hits, shields. 
These can take many forms. Sometimes they cover the entire ship, sometimes they're directional. They can be big bubbles or a thin layer over the vessel's skin, or various combinations of all these things. However, it's very common for hits on shields to still cause knock-on issues to the craft they're meant to be protecting. These range from shaking it about to overloading shield systems and things of that nature, which means that sometimes they can blend into the next layer of the onion, preventing a hit from penetrating the ship. This is of course where armour comes in. When everything else fails, when you've been spotted, fired at and unable to dodge or parry the shot away, your armour is what keeps you alive. And armour is a big thing in certain settings, particularly BSG and Halo, though it shows up in Mass Effect and even The Expanse. It's everywhere really. Possibly the most important aspect of armour is thickness. The thicker the armour plate is, the less things can get through it. The second most important thing is density, as at high enough velocities that is really all that matters for stopping a projection. If the armour is more dense than the thing trying to get through it, then it'll be better at stopping it. The downside is thick, dense armour has an awful lot of mass, which makes moving whatever it is attached to a lot more difficult. You can shave off a bit of this mass by angling the armour, which means you can have the same effective thickness for less actual thickness, but only against shots coming in from a certain direction. For spacecraft, this would manifest in cone or blade shaped ships, super optimised for protection in a specific direction but which are fairly vulnerable from the sides. Another potential way of saving some mass is by using ripple shields, which are a series of thin plates separated by gaps, designed to first break up an incoming piece of debris and then stop the high velocity fragments that are created on impact. But I'm not sure these would be very effective versus long rod penetrators, which are rounds explicitly designed to punch through armour by boring their way through it. All these are great for purely kinetic hits, but what about lasers, particle beams or other more exotic things that often show up in sci-fi? Well, I did provide some ways of protecting against those in the videos on those weapon types, but what if there's a mix of weapons in use? Well, then you have to make a mix of armour types. Whatever armour a ship has would generally be made up of various layers with each intended to work against a particular type of weapon, and the innermost layers should be something that prevents spall, which is shards of material thrown off by internal shockwaves within the armour plate itself. Just remember, this is the second to last level of protection in the onion. It's perfectly viable to have less armour and focus more on the previous layers to avoid being hit in the first place. But if you are hit and it does get through your armour, is it game over? Well, that's the core of the onion, preventing being affected by the hit. Now, it's unlikely that if something gets in it'll do nothing, though if you have a largely unarmoured craft with plenty of open space inside, it's certainly possible. No armour is best armour, right War Thunder players? But generally, this layer refers to things like redundancy and crew safety measures, proper damage control procedures and a design that works in favour of preventing damage from spreading, like having doors and hatches between sections to stop the loss of atmosphere. After all, a ship can be damaged but continue fighting. But if things get really bad and a vessel is so damaged the crew are forced to abandon ship, then this last onion layer is also where things like lifeboats and escape pods come in. If the crew can escape and be rescued later on, they can fight again in future. Though, if it's a Klingon ship, they may prefer to have an honourable death in combat than resort to hopping overboard. So, that's an overview of how to keep a ship and its crew alive and in the fight. But it doesn't just apply to spacecraft. When I first heard about the Onion, it was in reference to tanks, but it can apply to basically all combat. Think about how it applies to your favourite spaceship, about how different settings pick and choose parts of it to tell their stories, and how you can use it for your own designs. How do we dice an onion? Big onion. Look at that. Woo! To the good onion. Good onion is a heavy onion. It's a six pound onion. It's also an onion where the onion is put. This is the tip of the onion or the onion. The onion is not the knife around the onion. Remove the pepper skin of the onion. Dice an onion. It's an onion. Cut the onion in half. On the onion. It's an onion. Then the onion. The onion with onion. Onion. Onion right here. It's onion. It's onion. The onion. You can support Space Dock by joining our Patreon where you can get our Space Fighter design reference book. Alternatively, you can support us directly through YouTube by giving us super thanks or by becoming a channel member. Thanks to our supporters and thank you for watching.